Hey YouTube, it's IC, and welcome to the 174th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. All right, and to start off, I wanted to talk about a recent release from Apple before actually going over the CES coverage in this video. So to start off the other day on January 7th, 2014, with nearly a month between pre-release iterations, Apple issued iOS 7.1 Beta 3 to registered iOS developers. Now, in addition to being available for immediate download via the company's developer portal, those who were on a previous version of the beta can take advantage of iOS's built-in over-the-air update feature. Now, as expected, the latest update contains a revised build number suggesting additional revisions have been made to the firmware. However, not all updates are welcome. Although it has yet to be seen, it's extremely likely that the finalized version of 7.1 will patch the Evasion 7 untethered jailbreak for iOS 7, of course being the first fully untethered jailbreak to support all devices since the original Evasion utility was released by the Evaders last year for iOS 6 through 6.1.2. Now we'll get back to jailbreaking and 7.1 for a bit. If you're curious to see what changes the beta 3 iteration of the firmware brings, then just be sure to check out the complete change log on jailbreak tech info. I'll have a link to that down below in the more info. For now, let's go over some of my favorite things from CES or the annual consumer electronics show this year. Now, for those of you who don't know, thousands of technology companies gather each year in Las Vegas, Nevada to show off their latest advancements in the technology arena. So these six things that I'm going to cover in today's episode won't even scratch the surface of everything that was revealed at CES 2014. However, there are tons of reputable sources online that contain more coverage on the show and the companies that took part in it. All right, now to start off, there's no denying that smart wearables have had somewhat of a rocky start. However, it's definitely possible, and a lot of analysts are predicting that wearables will be the next big thing in the mobile technology space, similar to how tablets have had an incredibly huge impact. So one of my top picks is the all-new Pebble smartwatch Steel. Now initially, when the first Pebble was revealed and released last year, it looked somewhat like a juvenile toy with its plastic design. However, this time around, Pebble is trying to expand their audience, hence the name Steel. They're actually bringing a really nice, uniform, and more streamlined look, so essentially Pebble Steel is what the first iteration of Pebble should have been. It's currently available to order for $249 on the company's site, getpebble.com. However, orders that are placed now won't ship until next month or even later in some cases. All right, moving on, Valve Steam Machines were at CES in great numbers from numerous manufacturers. Now, for those of you who don't know, Valve is trying to bring the PC gaming experience to the living room in an attempt to overthrow consoles for, again, living room game entertainment. So in doing this, in the future, numerous manufacturers will create their own Steam machines with varying components, different specifications, and they'll come in all different shapes and sizes, small and big alike. All right, and kind of similar, PC gaming accessories company Razer stunned gamers and custom build computer enthusiasts with products Project Christine, a new and completely modular concept for building a PC tower. And I say concept because it's exactly that. As of now, there are no plans to bring Project Christine to market, but it's highly likely that we will see something like it in the future. Let me explain it really quick. Essentially, the base idea behind Project Christine is that you have a base. Now, this is a base that extends vertically with slots and expansion ports on each side. Now, the idea is I'm thinking that they'll team up with various component manufacturers, such as Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, etc., that will create different components for the tower that are fully enclosed and connect via a simple and universal method. Now, if this comes to market, this will revolutionize building a PC and also take some of the fun out of it, in my opinion. Now, Loomis DK40 smart glasses were something else that caught my attention. They appear to be everything that Google Glass isn't by offering a true HUD or heads-up display. Now, I personally own Google Glass. I've done one video on the product, and that was just an unboxing video when I first received it over the summer. Now, I've got to say, while I was extremely excited for the whole concept, I wasn't overly impressed or blown away by the initial product. With that said, a lot could still change for Google Glass before the company makes it widely available to consumers. Additionally, they rolled Google Glass out in a very selective manner. And again, in my opinion, there are just so many things wrong with Google Glass from its awful battery life, not even 24 hours of standby on a full charge to its awkwardly placed glass prism that's the portal into the device that doesn't provide the best viewing experience, especially in daylight. I had significant trouble even using glass outdoors because again, I simply couldn't see it. Hopefully though, companies will continue to pioneer wearable technology and it seems as though the Loomis DK40 is really one of the more viable options to bring smart glasses to the public. From everyone who tested them, they said that they're the best solution they've seen thus far. 
Now next I wanted to briefly talk about a new and upcoming drone from Parrot. Now I'm a huge fan of the company and I actually have the Parrot AR Drone 2.0 and their Zeke wireless Bluetooth noise canceling headphones. And I definitely recommend Parrot to people who ask me about headphones and drones. Well now their new product, the Mini Drone, is a quadricopter that offers breakthroughs in consumer smart drone technology thanks to numerous sensors and autopilot capabilities. There's no set release date for it though, however it's said to have approximately 7 minutes of fly time on a single battery charge. And of course we expect that it will be fully pilotable via a smart device such as an iPhone, iPad, or any other tablet or Android smartphone. Alright, and finally on my list, Sony's Handycam FDR AX100 will offer customers the first true and portable, relatively inexpensive solution for recording 4K video at 30 frames per second. Sony hopes to make its new Handycam available in March at a price point of just $1,999.99. Now even though that is a lot, I said just because there are other solutions available right now that cost between $5,000 to $40,000 and more in some cases and they're definitely not even close to being on the same portable side as the new Sony Handycam. Alright, and that's everything at CES I wanted to mention. I know there are tons of other products that were revealed and announced and also detailed there. So if you guys want additional coverage, you can definitely find it on the web. And for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you may already know, but I'm planning on and I'm working on a Tesla Model S review video. And I'm trying to make my video as in-depth as possible and cover as many different aspects of the car as I can. For those of you who don't know, I'll give you guys a quick rundown. Tesla is a Silicon Valley based company that creates electric vehicles. But the Model S is their premium sedan that features an incredible fusion between performance, technology, range, luxury, and handling. So of course, just be sure to stay tuned for that. I'm going to try to push it out to you guys as soon as I can. Now back to Apple and iOS 7.1. As far as jailbreaking is concerned, if you intend to either jailbreak or keep your device in its jailbroken state, avoid 7.1 at all costs. Although the third beta doesn't directly patch the vulnerabilities exploited in Evasion 7 to achieve an untethered iOS 7 through 7.0.4 jailbreak, it's likely that Apple's final 7.1 release will. What's more, betas expire, so for those of you who update to iOS 7.1 beta 3, eventually you will no longer be able to use your device until you update it to either the next beta or the latest public firmware, which at that time it will likely be the finalized version of 7.1. And for more on iOS 7, jailbreaking, 7.0.4, and really everything you need to know Know about the topic, I highly recommend a new article from Jailbreak Evasion 7 and I'll have that link down below. Also on the topic following last week's episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors, I created a new video discussing some incredible tweaks available inside of Cydia for jailbroken devices that improve the iPhone 5S's Touch ID sensor and add capabilities to it that weren't available before. So if you are interested in seeing some of the first tweaks for the Touch ID sensor, check out that video. Also recently we've been working hard on some really awesome revisions to free app life. I'm not really going to go over what free app life is in this video. If you want more details on it and to learn how to obtain paid applications from Apple's App Store and gift cards 100% for free legally while supporting developers, you can find an in-depth video tutorial on the topic below. But again, for the changes, we've revamped sponsors, added a new company. You should have more options to earn points on free app life in supported countries now. And we are also working on adding some really awesome prizes that should go live hopefully within the next week or so. And I'm also working on creating a new video ad for the service, so just be sure to stay tuned for that as well. All right, and that's it for this episode. Again, for more details on 7.1, you can find a complete change log on Jailbreak Tech Info. Now, if you guys want a chance to enter to win a $100 Amazon gift card in this video, just be sure to read it up, hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos, and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. Once your comments have been posted, you'll be automatically entered to win. And if you don't know what to leave in the comment section, try answering the question of the day. And for this video, that's what were you most excited about and what caught your attention at CES 2014. So again, just be sure to let me know down below or on Jailbreak Tech Info. And of course, if you guys want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos and cover Jailbreak topics, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, add me on your circles inside of Google+, and follow me on Instagram at ICUID. Links to everything can be found down below in the more info. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.